Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning into another episode here. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factor. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year. This series will be a little different here. We're going to go through the Jetpack Compose Basics Code Lab that's published by Google here. We'll go through it together. It's basically my first time doing it. Um, and we're just going to learn Compose together. So if you're interested in Compose, if you're looking forward to uh, modern Android stuff in 2023, well, let's, uh, let's kick the new year off right. Just go ahead and jump right into it here. Smash that like button as we get started. Subscribe if you're brand new. So it says here is Jetpack Compose is a modern toolkit designed to simplify UI development. Uh, we have a reactive programming model and we use uh, you know, what they call a declarative UI style, meaning that you know, basically as your code runs linearly, we can go ahead and interpret what that code is doing and therefore build a, a UI around it. If you've been following along with the channel, we've kind of been doing this a little bit with epoxy, but now, you know, this is Google supported. This is the way of the future um, and, you know, compose first. But it's, it's kind of the same concept there where you can just, you know, see things uh, happen linearly. You get a little demo down here, uh, you know, just like what we're going to end up building out in this code lab. So I'm excited to jump into it. I've upgraded to Android Studio Dolphin. So we're ready to go here. Go on to the next step. We're going to go ahead and start a new Android Studio project. We're going to select our empty compose activity and we are going to name it Basics Code Lab. So just go ahead and copy that. Afterwards, our code should look like this. So let's just bounce over here. Got that all ready to go. We will hit next and do Basics Code Lab. Minimum API at least 21. We're set to 26, so we're all good there and we'll let that do its thing. All right, that project's coming to life here. We have main activity, we got a basics code lab theme, we have some composables, a preview, and it looks like we have all of that stuff right here as well. We have our composable, we have our preview. Okay, looks like everything is going to plan so far. Let's hit next. So as I'm sure most of us are already aware, we have this concept of composable functions, and it's basically looks just like regular Kotlin, right? It's just a regular function that's annotated with at composable. Composables can be called within other composables and basically they're the smallest, you know, atomic unit of building a UI element and you can kind of string them all together like Lego blocks to just build the UI that you're interested in. And what ends up happening here is inside of our activity, we end up seeing something that looks like this. We have a set content block. We then wrap it with our theme. We have a surface and then we have our greeting here. The greeting was the name of this function and we basically just add in this text element that then says hello name and we can pass in Android as our name. So it'll say hello Android, right? So now we don't necessarily have that, you know, old school XML file. Instead, we have everything declared inside of our activity, all written in Kotlin, the language we know and love. We have an interesting way here of annotating another composable with a preview option that will then just allow us to see it a little bit in the IDE before we go ahead and uh, you know run things. So if we go ahead and click split, we're gonna have to build and refresh here. So let me just go ahead and do that for you guys. Get some more real estate over here. And basically because this, annot this function is annotated with preview, we'll see basically what this composable will resolve to inside of you know this area over here where the emulator kind of is. And now we see it there, we see it named default preview because that is the name of this function. And basically, you know, we wrap it in our theme and then we just call our greeting, you know, with the Android. And so we see hello Android. If we really quickly change this to, to something else here, as in our greeting function, hello, it is 2023. We can just go ahead, build and refresh. And now, uh huh, yep we should see that now this has kind of updated, right? So we can kind of see the UI elements before we actually run them on the screen, which is just, you know, super helpful. It'll just help, uh, you know, with development time and all that kind of stuff, just speed, all that good stuff that we care about. So we're gonna go back to the code lab here and, sorry, and just uh, move on here. We got to the next page. All right, so tweaking the UI here, let's start by setting a different background color for our greeting composable. You can do this by wrapping the text composable with a surface. Surface takes a color. So you use the material theme.colorscheme.primary and we can go ahead and see what happens. So let's just go ahead and copy this because they already did it for us, why not? We'll just paste it right in here on our greeting. So we see we've declared a surface, again, the color with what they're interested in, but we could change it to basically anything we want. And then this content stays the same. So we're just gonna go ahead and rerun that real quick. And now we can see 
this primary. If for simplicity, we don't want to use the theme here, we can probably just set something here like, you know, color.red, and then we can just very easily see this get updated, uh, you know, to what you would expect here, right? A very vibrant, a very red color. So let's just go with, I don't know, blue. Maybe that'll be a little bit cleaner. Let's bounce back to the code bit, uh, code lab and move on. Uh, now this is actually an interesting uh, change here or, or an interesting thing to note. Uh, we do have uh, this detail of the text is now white, right? This was the default preview when we used the uh, material theme color scheme primary and uh, it actually changes the text to white. If we look over here, our text is actually black because that's just the default color and we've just, you know, we haven't modified anything about the text. However, because of Material 3, because of the way that this uh, theme and color scheme works and the fact that this is a surface, it actually is smart enough to know that, uh, you know, if there's some reason to, to change the color, right, of the text, it will actually do that for us. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm a little torn because it's doing a lot more than you think <laughs> at first. Um, I would rather have control over the text color and the actual background color, but for the sake of the demo, it is pretty cool. That is kind of their theming concept, uh, the material components, this composed Material 3 surface. It's smart enough to know, hey, if, if my color is light enough, uh, I should be using a dark text color. If my color is dark enough, I should be using a, a light text color. It has all the accessibility built into it. So it is really interesting and cool, but um, you know, at the same time, I do like to have a little bit more control personally. Uh, so then we can go ahead and dive into the concept of modifiers here. Uh, modifiers are <laughs> extremely powerful and more or less every attribute from the XML you know, system is wrapped inside of our modifiers, at least the vast majority of them. Very, very powerful stuff. And here we're going to apply a padding of 24 dp. So let's just go ahead and copy that. And it's just very simple to modify this information, right? So let's just go ahead and import some of these things. Lovely. And we can see here why this is just becoming so powerful, right? We're, we're creating a text attribute or sorry, a text composable here. We're modifying some of the attributes, right? The actual text of the text element is now this, uh, which is, you know, dynamic based upon what information gets passed into this function. And then we can go ahead and update the modifier. And in this case, we're just modifying the padding of this element. We'll go ahead and rerun this here, but you can see you can just call dot DP on this 24 and then it just has 24 DP. It just converts it to it. It's actually, I believe, uh, an extension or sorry, an inline function on int and it will just go ahead and do the conversion for you. So that's really nice and really convenient. And we're just setting the padding everywhere to be 24 DP. Uh, and that's mainly because all of the values here are set to 24 dp but you could very easily say you know horizontal 24 and a vertical i don't know uh let's just do 8 dp you can go ahead and rerun those things there and we should see this change quite a bit here as that updates obviously the vertical padding is not the same as the horizontal one uh and you know now we have that design instead right so we're just going to set it back to 24. Maybe we'll be verbose here and do all equals 24. So that's very obvious why, you know, uh, the, the view looks the way that it does. Yep. As I mentioned here, it says there's dozens of modifiers, which could be used to align, animate, layout, make clickable, scrollable, transform, etc. There's a comprehensive list here that you can find, uh, but basically a lot of the Android XML attributes on all of those views are now embedded inside of modifiers which, uh, you know, is, is really nice. And so once we learn a couple of those, you know, very popular, very common things we want to modify, we can just really manipulate our view any way we want. This page here brings up a reasonable point, something that I'm interested in getting some feedback from you guys here. So it says the more composables you add to the UI, the more levels of nesting you create, which is very, very true, right? Um, you could see here that, you know, the, the regular indentation starts here, and then we have our theme, which then starts here, and then we have basically our content here. If for some reason we wanted to have, you know, a surface inside of a surface here, and then for some reason another one down here, right? You could see how this cascading effect gets a little, uh, you know, intense. And if we go ahead and, you know, like hit enter here and hit enter here to get the nice like spacing and whatnot, we could see that, you know, we end up finding ourselves in something that is, in my opinion, a little bit less readable. So this area here is just talking about, you know, basically creating functions that we can then call that kind of encapsulate that information to just trim down on the amount 
of uh, you know nesting that we see there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this composable here and just pop it into our application here. It's now just a composable called My App, and this has everything that we were going to. Uh, you know that we have inside of here. So if we go ahead and delete this, we'll see that this has a surface that has a modifier on it um, and then inside of it has the greeting uh, composable as well, which mimics exactly this. So basically we're now able, I just need to copy this, we're now able to translate this entire thing into simply just calling my app and then we will say modifier equals modifier.fill max size and you know now our application starts to look a little bit cleaner right now this is just the actual uh, content that we're setting inside of our activity and if we want to change something about the actual view we can just modify this composable here and this doesn't need to get changed anymore and this be becomes very simple right and this is just offloading the issue of nesting <laughs> into this function but we can rinse and repeat this process to make it a little bit more uh, you know manageable a little bit more reusable um, you know, as we start to build out more and more composables here. So we went ahead and rerun things and everything is exactly the same. So that's extremely helpful, very clean. And uh, this is just saying you can clean it up from there. And uh, yeah, this next, this next section talks about rows and columns, which really starts to get into, you know, how we can start layering and creating some, um, you know, actual meaningful UIs here. But I'm going to save this to the next episode. This is just an introductory uh, episode to what we're going to be doing. Thank you so much if you made it this far. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you are brand new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.